The Story of Sleeping Beauty Once upon a time there existed a king and queen who yearned for a child with an intensity that resonated through their every waking thought. Whispers of their unfulfilled longing reverberated through the corridors of their kingdom, echoing into the ethereal realms. One fateful day, when the queen immersed herself in the enchanting waters of her bath, a mystical frog emerged from the depths, perching itself on terra firma. The frog's mesmerizing gaze locked with the queen's as it proclaimed in a voice laden with ancient wisdom, Your wish shall be granted. Before a year's completion, a daughter of unparalleled beauty shall grace this world. As destiny unfurled its wondrous threads, the queen, as the frog foretold, gave birth to a daughter so resplendent that even the sun cast envious glimmers upon her countenance. Overjoyed, the king's heart danced with exultation, compelling him to orchestrate a grand feast. The occasion would not only celebrate their blessed child, but also beckon the presence of esteemed relatives, friends, and fairies of the realm. Thirteen fairies, veritable keepers of celestial secrets, resided within the kingdom's boundaries, yet the king, in his fervor, inadvertently provided only twelve golden plates for the banquet. Hence, one of the fairies would be left bereft of their rightful place. Nevertheless, the festivities unfolded in a symphony of opulence. As the grand finale drew near, each fairy gracefully approached the cradle, unveiling her unique offerings to the child. One bestowed virtue, another unattainable beauty, a third showered riches upon the infant. Thus the blessings continued, encompassing all the world could ever bestow upon a mortal soul. Yet when the eleventh fairy concluded her benediction, a thirteenth fairy, uninvited and consumed by bitterness, manifested herself. Ignoring formalities, she scornfully proclaimed in a voice that carried the weight of eons, On the fifteenth year of her earthly existence, the princess shall prick her delicate finger upon a spindle and succumb to eternal slumber. With an ominous air, she departed without uttering another word, leaving bewilderment and dread in her wake. The atmosphere teetered on the precipice of despair until the final fairy stepped forth, realizing the gravity of the situation. Though she could not erase the malicious prophecy, she could, within the confines of mystical possibility, temper its wrath. Addressing the court with a hushed, reverent voice, she uttered, The princess shall not perish. Instead, she shall transcend mortal realms and surrender to a profound sleep for one hundred years, encapsulated within an ethereal cocoon. The curtains of fate closed in this chapter, surrounding the kingdom in a captivating aura of anticipation, awaiting the destined encounter between the princess and her extraordinary slumber. Now, as the king found himself determined to protect his beloved child from this dreadful fate, he issued a decree demanding the burning of every spindle in the kingdom. And so it came to pass that the young maiden grew into womanhood. She possessed all the remarkable qualities bestowed upon her by the fairies who blessed her at birth. Her enchanting beauty, gentle nature, and brilliant mind captivated the hearts of all who had the pleasure of meeting her. On a day when the king and queen ventured out on a royal ride, the maiden was left alone within the walls of the majestic castle. With an adventurous spirit, she explored every nook and cranny, each chamber and parlor, guided purely by her whimsical imagination. She found an ancient tower during her explorations. Inside, she climbed a narrow winding stairway and discovered a small room where an elderly woman was spinning flax with her spindle. The princess politely greeted the old woman and was curious about the twirling object she was holding. She decided to try spinning it herself and, as prophesied, pricked her finger on the spindle and fell into a deep sleep from exhaustion. Unbeknownst to all, a mystifying sleep descended upon the entire castle. The king and queen, upon their return and within the grand hall, succumbed to the irresistible drowsiness that enveloped them. The courtiers and attendants, the horses in their stalls, 
the dogs in the yard, the pigeons perched on the rooftops, even pesky flies clinging to the walls, all were consumed in the deep slumber. Time seemed to pause as the fire's flickering warmth grew still, and the meat on the spit ceased to roast. Even the hot-blooded cook, holding the scullion with his punishing grip, let him go with a single reprimand. Silence befell the land as the wind ceased to dance, and not a solitary leaf fluttered from the surrounding trees. Slowly but surely, an impenetrable thicket of thorns encircled the castle, growing thicker each year. Eventually, the once majestic fortress became a hidden treasure concealed from mortal eyes save for the solitary vein adorning the rooftop, a lonely beacon amidst an enchanting slumber. As the rumor spread throughout the land, captivating whispers of the beautiful sleeping Rosamond, her enchanting presence fascinated the minds of all. Years passed, and a courageous prince ventured into the very realm where the hedge of thorns stood. An elderly man, wise and contemplative, revealed to him the secrets of the fabled castle. Behind the formidable barricade lay the dormant Princess Rosamond. The king, the queen, their entire court lost in eternal slumber. Legend spoke of countless unfortunate souls who met their demise pierced and trapped by the thorns. Undeterred, the young prince declared, I fear no danger. I shall breach the thorn hedge and lay my eyes upon the exquisite Rosamond. The wise elder, well aware of the perils that lay ahead, tried to dissuade him, but the prince remained steadfast. The hundred years had come to a close, marking the day when Rosamond would awaken. As the prince approached the once formidable hedge, the metamorphosis occurred. The thorns transformed into a vibrant tapestry of blooming beauty, parting ways to welcome his presence. Behind him the thorns united, creating an impenetrable barrier. Stepping into the castle yard, he beheld horses and brindled hunting dogs in a peaceful slumber while pigeons nestled on the roof, their heads tucked beneath their wings. Crossing the threshold, he noticed flies suspended in midair, the cook with a hand poised for reprimand, and the kitchen maid holding a black fowl ready to be plucked. Undeterred by the eerie silence, the prince continued his ascent, reaching the grand hall where the entire court lay in peaceful repose. Above on their throne slept the king and queen oblivious to the presence of the prince. Still he pressed forward, the sound of his breath the only audible accompaniment to his journey. Finally he reached the tower, climbing the winding staircase until he arrived at the door of the chamber where the beautiful Rosamond lay in her eternal slumber. Unable to resist the allure of her ethereal beauty, the prince found himself mesmerized by her sleeping form. With bated breath, he leaned closer, unable to avert his gaze, until finally he succumbed to an irresistible urge and gently placed a kiss upon her lips. As she awakened from her slumber, her eyes slowly fluttered open, revealing a tender gaze upon him. With grace, she rose from her place, and the two of them ventured forth hand in hand. In that surreal moment, the king, the queen, and the entire court were brought to consciousness, their eyes wide with astonishment. Even the horses in the yard arose and shook themselves while hounds sprang up with wagging tails. The pigeons perched on the roof emerged from beneath their wings, casting curious glances before soaring into the vast expanse of the field. The flies on the wall inched forward, relentlessly pursuing their curious journey. The flames of the kitchen fire danced again and crackled, eagerly cooking the succulent meat. The joint on the spit began to slowly turn, sizzling and filling the air with an enticing aroma. The spindle used by the wicked fairy to curse Sleeping Beauty to prick her finger on her 15th birthday is often symbolic of danger and destruction that comes from useless knowledge, also temptation. The frog symbolized the magical fulfillment of the queen's wishes. She was filled with joy and immediately raced to tell her husband the wonderful news. And talking animals like that often symbolize otherworldly help as well as companionship. 
The king can represent the conscious mind, whereas the queen, the deep mind. And when the two minds work in harmony, we have a loving parental relationship with ourselves. The prince's willingness to risk his life to save Sleeping Beauty shows the power of how we must radically alter the way we think in order to overcome obstacles. Because the prince represents true love, and his persistence in finding Sleeping Beauty can be a symbol of our faith and how we have to have an unwavering faith in our magic in order for things to work. The spinning wheel can also stand as a reminder of the danger of knowledge without wisdom It represents, like we said, with the spindle, temptation. The twelve fairies can represent the power of good over evil. The twelve fairies also represent otherworldly assistance, and they represent the higher aspects of the twelve zodiacal signs, and that we can receive gifts and blessings from those higher powers. The evil fairy can represent the ego mind that wants to destroy all of our good. But also, in a more esoteric sense, it represents how easily we can offend the world of the fairy. Because the reaction of what we would call the wicked or evil fairy, they don't consider it wicked or evil. They just consider it normal. (laughs) So for those of us fairy magicians, that so-called evil fairy is just a reminder to us that morals don't work the same way in the fairy kingdom. And so what is important for us is to be very cautious, very gracious, and to do our best not to offend the fairy kingdom. So that's just a few little symbols that can help you get started. You can find more and more. There is, just like with the Psalms, an infinite amount of magical symbols within every fairy tale. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I so appreciate you. Until next time, blessed be.